morning new vlog. By morning, I mean afternoon. I gotta leave in like half an hour for my friend's graduation party, but before I do that, I wanted to sit down, introduce the new vlog, and let me talk about what I'm currently reading and then what I want to read this week. I'm currently reading nothing because I haven't started anything yet, but the book that I want to read next is the oldest book that's been on my TBR. So that book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. <laughs> Jane Eyre is a book that so many people praise and I have avoided spoilers for so long and I know I'm gonna like it because it has like this really strong main character. I don't know anything about the plot other than everyone loves Jane. If anything, this is gonna be my mission and I might have audiobooks going alongside it because I know it could be sort of difficult to get the motivation to read classics, but I also have a graphic novel that could be a little bit of a reprieve from it. So I have On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden, which is out from the library. This graphic novel's massive. All I know about it is that it is set in space and I think there's a sapphic relationship, question mark? I started this and freaked myself out because the text is so tiny and I don't know how easy or difficult this will be to read. I'm gonna give this my best shot, but if it ends up not being comprehensible to me, then I will just return her to the library. And then I have a couple of lighter options if I'm feeling one way or another. I just got this pre-order in the mail, Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. This just sounds like so much fun. It's about this girl that works at a carnival with her crush, her best friend, a bunch of people from her school. And she works as like the mascot of a hot dog. And it's this whole scheme of her trying to like fake a relationship with another girl to make her crush jealous i don't know if that's any true at all but i just love the carnival setting and i think that's gonna be so much fun okay i have to go to this party now hi friends it has not been a fun day spoiler alert nothing is wrong at all i just am so caught up in the fact that i don't do anything all day every day and that's like my high school dream is just like doing nothing all day but now that i'm living that reality it's just really affecting me and i don't want to get into it because i'll get emo but just for the past few days i felt like i want to do something but like there's nothing to do which is a shitty excuse in itself but i'm not asking for advice or for anyone to like comment and tell me what i should do to make me feel better i just don't feel good which hopefully will get better this week because i have several book events that i'm going to and then i'm pet sitting for my friend over the weekend so maybe that'll be a change of pace but this is all to say that i started reading a classic i wanted to read the oldest book on my tbr i think i mentioned that so i started jane eyre yesterday and i did like it i got 25 pages in which is like chapter two but i am enjoying it i'm understanding it i like jane's characterization so far but as you can imagine with my headspace where it is right now i just don't want to turn to one of my hobbies reading and have that be something that's difficult for me or something that doesn't make me feel motivated because God knows the rest of my life I feel unmotivated to do anything. So I really just wanna prioritize like fun books right now just to cheer myself up in all this free time so i'm not saying that jane eyre isn't fun but chapter one literally has her abusive foster brother slamming her against a wall so <laughs> i decided i'm gonna pick up this non-fiction book instead by shane burkhaw i've talked about him in my last couple vlogs because i've been getting his books for review well this one i purchased myself and then i got his second book <laughs> for review and these are both books of essays that talk about shane having muscular dystrophy and then how he lives his day-to-day -day life in a wheelchair with his family with his girlfriend but these are all told in like his humorous style that i really enjoy in his videos he's a youtuber and i just think he's great so i read the introduction of this book to see if it would be something that i want to read and i think it's just what i need right now I don't think I can do like serious classic at the moment. So I'm gonna read something more lighthearted, something that makes me giggle. Good morning everyone! Right now I'm on the way to the library because I'm picking up book signing tickets for Jay Kristoff. He's coming to town next Thursday. I got like four hours of sleep for me and my friends to go to this book signing. I'm updating because I want to let you know I got to page 100 of my book last night and so far it's pretty good but I do want to mention that 
The chapter that I left off on is one that a lot of reviewers have commented on. Basically, he has this chapter that's talking about his experience riding the short bus. At first, I liked the intention of it because it was talking about like, oh, if you ride the short bus, it doesn't mean you have a mental disability. It just means it's the more accessible bus. So he doesn't like the stereotype that the short bus has. But then he goes on to kind of make fun of the other people who ride the bus. And I thought that that was just terrible. I would just say if you want to read this book, but you're sensitive to people being insensitive toward people with mental disabilities, I wouldn't pick this one up. Because otherwise, it's going really, really well. I like it a lot. It's funny. I read 100 pages of it in one sitting. Like, I really have no complaints. Yeah, I'm going to turn on my jams now. We're going to drive 45 minutes to Irving. And I will let you know when I'm back home. Hello, mother truckers. What's good? <laughs> So my current challenge to myself is to not buy any books. So book buying ban 2019, it's on. But also I'm going to several book signings this week and I didn't prepare for that. And I didn't remember that until after I decided I'm not gonna buy any books. This is a very lengthy explanation just to tell you I failed. <laughs> to be fair, three of these are for my friends and only two of them are for me. I only spent you know what, I'm not gonna throw that number out there. Like I mentioned, I think yesterday, Jay Kristoff is coming to Texas. If you open my wallet, you won't see any money, but you will see <laughs> my tickets to Jay Kristoff where I waited outside the library and got them first thing in the morning the other day. I met Jay Kristoff last year when he and Amy Kaufman were touring for Obsidio, but since then, I think the Never Night series has gone a lot more viral than it used to be on BookTube, so I have like multiple close friends that tell me I need to read Never Night. So I own Never Night and I wanted to make sure that I had a copy of the second book so I ordered that <laughs> hello oh love her okay though so here she is God's grave the second book I need to read these and I haven't <laughs> but this tour is for his newest book that just came out today so I also have that one box <laughs> So I got a copy for myself and then whenever I posted on Twitter that I was going to the signing, two of my friendos replied that they want a book or they didn't reply that they want a book, but they were like, hey, it's exciting. And I was like, you want a book? So I got three copies of Jay Kristoff's newest book. And actually this is a collab. This is with Amy Kaufman also, but she couldn't go on the American tour for some reason. So it's just gonna be him. But yeah, this is Aurora Rising, his newest book with Amy. Let me pretend to be a stan really quick and be like, oh my God, I got three copies. No, <laughs> one of these is for Boston, who I'll link down below. And one of these is for Jake, who I'll also link down below. I'm making sure they get fed and I'm getting them copies. And then here's mine. So this is a sci-fi novel. All I know about it is that it's about like five or six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> it's seven people all on this one like space squad. You're just gonna leave the door open. It's fine. I don't know at all what the mission is, but I think after Six of Crows, all of the book community is down to have these like heist squads. So I think that's all that I needed to hear. So yeah, I got his newest book that just came out today. I will let you know if this is good. Probably Jake and Boston will have binge read this book and they'll also let you know if it's good. And then she couldn't stop it. Five books. I ordered one more. This one's also not for me. So my other really good booktube friend named Sammy is also a stan. <laughs> oh wait. That's not the book I was expecting. This is a present. Oh no, I saw what it was. I thought this was my book for Sammy and it's not. You know where this has to go? I don't think I announced this yesterday. I'm doing this thing where I'm not gonna open the books that I get in the mail for fun. So I'm putting it on my stack that I'm not gonna open until June 4th, my birthday. I definitely saw what book that was and I'm very hyped, but we're gonna pretend like I didn't see it. So I still have one more book coming. That was the unboxing. Jay Kristoff stands only on this channel. I've been waiting all day to do this unboxing and it's strictly because I've been too lazy to film it. So here we are. Here's the package that I thought I had gotten earlier and didn't. So this is the last book I was waiting on for Jay Kristoff. Life Like by Jay Kristoff. I have no interest in reading this. <laughs> This is from my friend named Sammy. That's all I have to say. This isn't even a book haul because it's not even my book. So why did I film this? But yeah, and I'm not going to give you a synopsis. I'm just going to tell you, go check out Sammy's channel. She'll probably get this in like four months considering how slow it takes me to get to the post office. But enjoy Sammy. 
Hello. I feel like I never wear this much makeup anymore, so I'm like, who am I? I am on my way to a book signing, but more specifically, I'm on my way to Chipotle. And I'm meeting Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte at Chipotle, and then we're gonna go wait at Irving Public Library so that we can go to a J. Kristoff book signing. Today's gonna be quite interesting because, I don't know why, but for the past four years, publishers have been like, North Texas, unacquainted with her. Suddenly this month they were like, oh, you guys wanted book signings? Have a lot of them. So Jay Kristoff and Rachel Hawkins are gonna be in Dallas on the same night. I have tickets for Jay Kristoff and I have tickets for Rachel Hawkins. And we're gonna go to both. <laughs> the plan is to be first in line at Jay's signing line, get everything signed. I have like six books for myself and friends. And then jump in my car, speed to Dallas, and then go to Half Price Books where Rachel is. So it's gonna be a night. We'll see if we even make it. I need to go grab those tickets, but I will update you when I'm with Olivia. She's my bae. I love her. It's just gonna be a voiceover, so just like don't talk. <laughs> Are you working on the recording? Yeah? Okay, good. Will you send it to me? Oh my god. <laughs> Ready to wave? Three, two, one. Okay, so they just announced no vlogging during the author thing, so let's pretend like we're them and answer a few questions. Um, I'm, I'm six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> but this is our clip to fill in for the fact that you're not gonna get any Jake Kristoff Why footage. is this eye closed so much more than the other one? <laughs> take a massive L with this is great lighting I feel like I'm about to perform like I'm on stage I'm like coming out of the shadows <laughs> Hello. we, we had to take an L with the Rachel Hawkins signing I think I vlogged in the store we missed it we can only do one book signing but we're back at Olivia's car we just drove like Super <laughs> Mario Kart style through downtown <laughs> Dallas terrifying <laughs> but this is my social interaction for this vlog so this week <laughs> I just wanted to document I have a friend <laughs> Willing. Oh my god, thumbnail? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get out of my car. <laughs> Witty Novels forces Livia reads a latte out of her car, not clickbait. Ugh, pray for me. <laughs> Hello. I've had a headache in like this brain region for a while. And I think it's because I laughed so hard in the car with Olivia. Anywho. Hi. I have a big haul of stuff. So I told anyone on booktube who wanted me to get them a book signed, I was like, yeah, just pay me back. So long story short, I got five copies of Aurora <laughs> Rising signed. I also got copies of these signed. I don't know why I brought God's Grade because it's a signed first edition and he signed it again. So like double signed question mark, more valuable. I kind of didn't have anything to say to him, which is a little weird because I had a lot of books to get signed. So it was quiet after a while. But I did ask if he recognized any of the people I was getting books signed for and he knew two of them, so. I just feel like I have no energy this club. My head hurts and I wanna go to bed. But then like I said, we were trying to catch two signings in one night and flopped, but I still picked up Her Royal Highness. I did wanna give you a synopsis of this because I feel like I just mentioned it passingly, but this is actually the second book in a series. They recently just rebranded the book and now it's called His Prince Charming or something like that. And this book is a sequel to that, but I've heard you can read it by itself and that's why I'm here. And this is about a girl from Houston, Texas going to boarding school in Scotland and and her, she's roommates with the princess. I'm not saying I have a thing for Texans and royal romances. Oh, and also this is a female-female romance, so like, these are my aesthetic this year. Yeah, I couldn't pass this one up, and even though we didn't make the signing, I still wanted to grab a signed copy. Also with the J. Kristoff signing, I got this big thing, uh, I guess these are bookmarks. Something I don't think I mentioned is that I'm dog sitting this weekend. So actually tomorrow morning is when it starts. I have to get up at like nine and go drive over to Rachel's house. So I'm gonna be out of the house for a couple days. Hopefully that'll invigorate me to want to read. And then Christine has a book signing tomorrow night. Christine and actually Jessie's gonna be there too. So I don't know if I'm gonna go just because I'm gonna be at Rachel's house. I had planned on going. I printed tickets to go. But again, I'm gonna be watching dogs and I don't know if night one is gonna be like crazy because I'm still getting used to it. So we'll see if I end up going to this Christine book signing. Hello my woman, you wanna do some good snuggles? 
Okay, hello. It feels so weird to be in an environment where I'm all alone and no one's eavesdropping on me filming clips. I made it to Rachel's house. I'm watching her dogs for the next two nights. I brought an ambitious TBR for those two nights. I want to talk about the things that I hope to finish this weekend and give you a little bit of a TBR because now that I'm not at home, I can't just reach for random books. So yeah, I'm still currently reading Laughing at My Nightmare. This is so quick to read, I could probably finish this in like two hours. So I'm gonna go downstairs with this in a second and go finish that. As soon as I finish that, I want to read his second essay collection. Should just take about the same amount of time, two hours or so, three hours, four hours. But also flipping through this arc, none of the pictures are there in the final copy. So this might be a little strange to read, but we'll go with it. I have a book from the library that I need to finish. I think I talked about this briefly, but On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. I started this and got like 20 pages in and it's kind of difficult to understand because there's like six different characters and I don't know who any of them are, but I'm gonna try and read this. Again, it'll take a couple hours. Finally, I asked to be in a group chat where a bunch of people on book Twitter are reading Aurora Rising together. Obviously, I just got this last night. I'm gonna brag a little bit. Ooh, look at that signature. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a sci-fi book about these teens that have to be on a team together to like protect the galaxy and they're all like the misfit psychopathic idiot <laughs> group, like the really dysfunctional group, which sounded like fun when Jay described it. So I'm enjoying it. Let me introduce you to the dogs that we'll be taking care of. I say we like you're here with me helping with the dogs. You didn't do anything. You're doing nothing this weekend. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this little bean in his bean bag. This is Benny. He's culprit number one. Hi, Noelle. It's sleepy time. <laughs> we just had a big walk, so I'm gonna let y'all relax. <laughs> this is just like my taste of moving out because there's like seven people that live in my house and it's so weird but good to be somewhere where like no one's listening to me right now unless they have cameras in their house, which if they're listening, hey guys. <laughs> woke the dog up for that. They're like, please stop. We don't want that. I'm sorry, baby. I know it's so out of tune. Okay, I'm gonna grab my book, come back downstairs, and let's get it on, baby. So I finished my book. I'll do a full review of it later, but we're outside now having a little break. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and start this second book of essays because this one is very short. Yeah, like less than 200 pages, which is even shorter than his first one and even that one was really quick to read. We gotta play fetch for a little bit, but this is the next thing that I wanna start. Can I have it? <laughs> you ready? Hello. I promised you a review of the book I finished today, so let's do that. Today I finished up Laughing at My Nightmare by Shane Bracaw. Hello, hello, he hung up on her. There we go. I feel like the only real way I can review this, especially now that I've started this other one, is to compare them. I will go ahead and say I think this is gonna be like a three star. I liked learning about Shane's backstory and learning about his childhood and the way that his disease has progressed and the ways that he deals with that and the ways that he sees humor out of it. The entire intention of this book is that he's built this platform out of using humor as a coping mechanism for a really serious disease that he has. So none of these essays were like laugh out loud humorous for me. It was enjoyable and quick to read, but I wasn't like laughing. And I think the main downfall of this is that it's very critical of people with mental disabilities and even people who have the same disease as him. He definitely starts to use people with other disabilities as a punchline. And I thought it was just in the one chapter that I discussed, but there were actually multiple chapters where he'll like make fun of how other disabled kids smelled and just really petty things that are just like mean because they can't help it. So it's like, I don't know what he was going for there. It just was really distasteful in my opinion. So this wasn't 
bad. It just had a couple of moments that were not good choices. And then overall, I just think it was like enjoyable, but I think it's only because I watch his channel. I don't know how interesting this would be to someone who doesn't watch his channel, but I think talking about that book transitions perfectly to talking about this book. So like I said, this is his next collection of essays that just came out like at the end of April and I'm already 72 pages into this one, so a little less than halfway. And I'm enjoying this one so much more. I think the main thing is you can really tell that his writing has grown so much. This first one was published in 2014 and this one is published five years later. So you can tell his writing has matured a lot and the way that he even comes across with his humor has gotten so much better because I'm actually like cracking a smile at this book and like really enjoying some of these lines. Additionally, I feel like this is doing a much better job at, I guess, representing the disabled community because like in this book, it feels like very much of here's stories about me and anyone else who has a disability, I can't relate to them or they have a different experience. And so it was very like self-centered on just his experience. Whereas in this book, I feel like he'll talk about an anecdote about like something that happened to him that's like unfair or shouldn't be that way and then he'll establish that it also occurs to other people in the community who are also disabled and so it will take something that happened to him and that he still is able to talk about in like a funny light to make it less severe but then he is able to then transition and say but this is still a big problem for a lot of people. So I think this one is really expanding it and making it in more into like this not necessarily like a lesson but it's more informative and it I think better captures the community of disabled people rather than pitching himself against other people and saying, you know, like instead of making himself better than other disabled people, he kind of joins them by communicating what could be better for them and just the different difficulties that they all have to face. So yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of words to just say that I'm enjoying this one a lot more. The dogs are currently downstairs having their dinner. So I was gonna read this until they finished eating and then we'd go outside and have some fun but my phone died and I had to come back upstairs so I think I'm gonna let my phone charge a bit and I'm gonna keep on reading this because it's quite good. And then turds kind of hit the fan. I don't remember exactly what day it was but around May 13th at 2 36 p.m. I got a call that I didn't get my dream job. So I entered a spiraling depression that lasted the duration from then to now. For your sake and maybe to keep my sanity, I recorded a few clips in the interim. So here we go, little snapshots of my day, what happened while I was gone. I left my house to go see Sasha when she toured here in Texas. I dog sat again and saw Benny. Lana Del Rey karaoke helped fill the void in my heart. Singing in the backyard, pull up in your- I got a lot of snuggles from the cats, which I appreciate. And look at these two boys, oh my goodness, they're so cute. I started taking walks to get out of my house. Oh look, it's Blackie, he's so cute. I interviewed for more jobs and tried to feel and look as if I was excited for them. Then I started filming library halls for Twitter to maintain some kind of normalcy. Rosie has a rash on her leg that won't go away, so we spent hundreds of dollars at the vet for your bum leg. There was almost a tornado one night and clearly I almost got swept away. Wouldn't have minded. I discovered that Gordo drinks his water like this, which is just sinful. Oh look, another book haul. Who's shocked? I promise I don't buy that many books. Yes, bitch, you do. And then there was about a month where I didn't do anything except read, get a gym membership, and feel sorry for myself. After which, I had lunch with Rhiannon and Hannah, who both have booktube channels. Here's a clip of them that I got while they weren't paying attention, because life. And then that leaves us here. Honestly, I thought this vlog would be longer and more interesting. So while we're here, I guess let's review the books that I was reading in that vlog. I returned on a sunbeam by Tilly Walden because it was long and boring and confusing and the text was small and I'm not about to put an effort to read a book. I have one brain cell. I finished Jane Eyre five months after I started it. Was it good? No. Was it long? Yes. Was it racist? I think so. Maybe I just don't know how to read because I wasn't analyzing this for class. Spark notes, hit me up. I finished the book of essays by Shane. They were really, really funny. I enjoyed it a lot and gave it four stars. I did not read any of the Jay Kristoff books, but I did read both of Rachel Hawkins' books, even the one that I didn't buy at the book signing and I got from the library, and they were so cute. I regret not buying the first book. They were such feel-good reads, very cute and sassy. I gave both of them four stars. They were pleasant. 
So here's where I leave you, employed, feeling better, and kind of sorrowful that I left this video raw on my laptop for four months. But hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye!